Hi, I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. Uh, I'm recording this message actually on the day that you will view it. So it is Thursday, uh, almost noon, uh, Thursday, August 18th. And as soon as Kim Herring and Leah uh, Johnson do their magic, uh, you will have access to this video. So uh, hopefully uh, later this afternoon. Um, feels like it's been absolutely forever since I've uh, recorded a message for you. Um, I want to thank our administrator, Kim Bergen-Jackson, for covering for me for the last three weeks. Uh, the last time I actually recorded was July tw for the July 21st message, and that was two days before my son Tony and his wife Alex, my daughter Allie and her fiancé Matt, and my wife April and I uh, boarded a cruise ship in Seattle to, to uh, head off to Alaska. We had an absolutely fantastic time on our cruise. It was so much fun. Uh, the scenery was beautiful. Uh, Tony made arrangements for four of us to play golf in Sitka, Alaska, which was our first stop. Uh, we did a whale, walks, a whale watching excursion uh, out of Icy Straits and um, uh, saw at least six whales. We think it was the same six whales that we kept chasing around the ocean, uh, but, but that was very, very fun to see whales. Uh, and then the food was fantastic. Uh, we probably drank a little bit too much, but had a really, really good time. And truly the best part like, uh, was just spending time together as a family. So, uh, so it was very well worth it. Um, as some of you know, uh, when I came back from vacation, I tested positive for COVID. Uh, so my time away from Oaknall was, was extended from one week to uh, nearly three weeks. Um, but even after that, it's like, I would still do it again. If I knew I was going to get COVID, it's like I would I would go on this cruise because like we just really needed that vacation and it was uh, such a good time. Uh, five of the six of us uh, that traveled uh, actually uh, did test positive for COVID, uh, so that wasn't great. Fortunately, none of us got too sick. Uh, I've told people that like you know if this were 2019 pre-COVID days. I wouldn't have missed any work. Uh, I never really felt bad. I had a cold, uh, and that's that's the worst that I felt. So, um, so fortunately, everybody else has been in in a similar situation, at least from my group. Um, our COVID news at Oaknall uh, is also not too bad. Uh, we currently only have one employee who is out uh, quarantined because of a positive test. Um, unfortunately, that person was somebody who works in the health center. Uh, so we're in that period of time where we have to do uh, resident testing uh, and we need to get through 14 days with no positive tests. Uh, there have been no uh, resident cases uh, with this most recent with this most recent occurrence. And to the best of our knowledge, we don't have any residents uh, at Oak Knoll anywhere uh, that are currently quarantined due to COVID. So, uh, so things are overall pretty good for us. Um, and in Johnson County, the numbers are up just very slightly from a week ago. Uh, Kim sent me information that said, it's like last week, there were 387 cases in the previous week. Uh, for this most recent reporting period, there were 401 cases. So that's an average of about 57 new cases per day. Um, I believe that as students come back to the university and start having classes next week, I think we'll see a spike in the numbers again. Uh, so just be looking for that uh, and continue to be cautious as you're out and about in the community. Um, I know that we're all done with this, like we just want it to be over. And I also believe that it's not going to be over anytime soon. Um, hopefully the experience that I had and that the rest of my uh, family had becomes more and more common. And it just is, it feels like a cold or feels like the flu and people aren't getting super sick and needing to be hospitalized and dying from, from COVID. 
uh, I continue to be grateful that we haven't had that occurrence for any of our residents or any of our staff members uh, here within the Oaknall community. And we are fortunate. It's like it's happened it's like as, as close as a half mile away to us. Uh, Briarwood like uh, had, had survived the pandemic for more than a year before they had their first positive cases. And then people started getting it. And it was at a time that vaccines weren't widely available yet. And people were dying just down the street from us. Uh, so we want to continue to be grateful for, for the experience that we've had. Hopefully we've learned an awful lot over the last uh, 27, 28 months uh, now and can continue to, to keep people safe. So enough about COVID. Um, I want to thank uh, you and all of our staff and board members for coming to the surprise uh, announcement party yesterday afternoon. It was fun standing at the podium and looking out at really a standing room only audience. Uh, we, it, the, the community room was absolutely full. Uh, for those of you who weren't able to be there, the announcement was that Oak Knoll had been awarded the Public Trust Award from the state association to which we belong. And that state association is called Leading Age Iowa. Uh, the association asked us to coordinate an event at a specific day and a specific time and to do video footage of that. Uh, Kim sent that video footage yesterday uh, back to the, the association so that they could put our uh, celebration in with other celebrations across the state of Iowa as these awards were announced and they are trying to do a media uh, blitz I think today or tomorrow to get that information out to local news outlets so that it's like it, it is well publicized what we do in serving older adults through the state of Iowa um, and it's just a really positive news story so as you watch the local TV news today and tomorrow, hopefully you will see something about Oak Knoll and, and the award that we, that we just uh, received. Uh, we actually didn't receive the award yet. We know that we will get it and we will formally receive it at the September uh, Leading Age Iowa Conference. Um, the nomination that Kim Bergen-Jack Kim Bergen Jackson wrote, sorry Kim, uh, for the Public Trust Award uh, noted many of the ways that Oak Knoll residents and staff are involved in the broader Iowa City community. Included in the nomination submission, and we apologize if we missed other things that people are involved in, but it's like there was quite a lengthy list. So included uh, in the submission were our teams who serve at the free lunch program, at Houses Into Homes, and who have helped build houses uh, with Habitat for Humanity. Our resident recycling team has coordinated the recycling of tons of materials over the years. The shelter house uh, has been supported through the annual book sale. Residents serve in the Table to Table program, the HACAP program. Used medical equipment is sent to where it can benefit people through the Life's On Moving program and many residents and staff have volunteered through the years and continue to do so at the community food pantry. Uh, so lots and lots of effort from both residents and staff to support those less fortunate in the Iowa City community. Uh, and I just wanna thank you for all of your work and, you, and, and tell you that you truly do make a difference in our, in our broader Iowa City community. So thank you. It's nice to receive the award, but we just do it because we're good, good people and good citizens. So thank you for, for all that you do. Um, we also yesterday recognized our 16-year resident, Rhoda Vernon, uh, who we nominated for and who was selected for th as the first recipient of a new award given by Leading Age Iowa. That award is called Leading Life. And the nomination submission described how Rhoda uh, is such a positive influence within our community. From Kim, uh, sorry, uh, Rhoda has gone uh, with Kim Bergen-Jackson to talk with students at the university. She's a huge supporter of Hancher 
and she is just a friendly face and supportive and encouraging to all of us as staff members uh, and, and the relationships that Rhoda has built with so many of our residents and so many of our staff members are just, just very strong, very deep, and we truly appreciate everything that you do, Rhoda, so thank you and congratulations again. Um, I missed the Chase and Emily Garrett concert uh, last week, but I heard very, very good uh, feedback about that concert. Uh, I was still in my COVID quarantine. This coming Tuesday, August 23rd, we have another concert with James Tutson. Uh, James is an Iowa City native. Uh, the meal for that concert will be burgers and brats, and that's at our East Campus, uh, so the courtyard at, at Oak Knoll East at 5.30 next Tuesday. Then the following week, we have another concert, uh, Tuesday, August 30th. Uh, that concert will be in the Spring Building Courtyard and it will be with Dave Zolo. Um, we will absolutely hope that the weather continues to be as nice as it's been for the last week. Uh, if you haven't been outside recently, I really encourage you to go take a walk this afternoon. It's just been absolutely beautiful and I hope that you are able to get outside and enjoy it. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to tell you today. Uh, thanks for watching if you made it this far and we'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Bye.